Hello everybody, this is David with another bear log and FPGA video. Um, previously, I did some videos on in particular state machines and I also did a clock using the seven segment display on the basis three. So now what I'm going to do in this video is go back and break down the how you drive the seven segment display on the basis three. So we're going to reference the Digilent basis three reference manual. Um, so that'll be all explained and we're going to go through the Verilog code for a demo circuit I created and then actually demonstrate it on the FPGA. So let me take you over to the reference manual. Okay, here's the Digilent Basis 3 reference manual. And what we're concerned about is right here, these 12 signals that we're driving from our circuitry that we create from the Arctic 7 to the four seven segment displays on the basis three. <clears throat> now, you'll notice uh, four anodes right here and eight cathodes. It's seven for each segment plus one for the decimal point, so there's eight total. So um, each of these cathodes is connected to every single display. So if you were to turn on all anodes at the same time, and drive one value here, you would see that same value on each of these displays. So in order to display other values or like counters and, and such, what you have to do is create a switching with some timing to switch through each of these anodes, turning it on and off at a certain refresh rate. And then as each anode is turned on, you're going to change the value of the cathodes that you want to display on each anode. So as we select this anode here, we're going to set the cathodes to display a certain value here. Then after we turn this off, we're going to turn this one on, then change the cathodes to the value that we want to display here, and so on and so forth as you go through each anode. And it just continues switching. Okay, another part of the reference manual shows this breakdown here for each display. So here are the anodes. We have them labeled three through zero. Here are the cathodes. And here's how uh, it sets up with the common anodes. So like I said, you're just driving one set of values to the cathodes. And when you switch on that particular anode, you're going to get a value. And so the anode is gonna provide the the high voltage up here and so when whichever cathode that you turn off whichever value down here you make zero will allow the power to drive through this LED which is each segment is just a small LED right so that's how you do that you turn whichever one you want off if you if you're driving ones through all of the cathodes you're turning all of these off because you're not allowing a potential difference in voltage from the anode to the cathode. Now let me go down to, so usually you would drive the anode with a one, but because the way it's set up with transistors on the basis three, you can see there the, the values are actually inverted. These are PMP transistors. So when you drive a zero here, you're actually driving a one to turn on the anode and you drive whichever segment you want on to a zero to allow that power to come through. Uh, so it's inverted. So when you have a one powering on the anode, it gets converted to a zero and there's no power. So zero coming from our circuitry actually turns on an anode. And that's actually explained right here. It says to illuminate a segment, the anode should be driven high while the cathode is driven low. That's usually the case. But however, since the basis three uses transistors to drive enough current into the common anode point, the anode enables are inverted, what I just talked about. Um, and then another thing you got to consider is the refresh rate. And that talks about in the manual here for the four digits to appear bright and continuously illuminated, all four digits should be driven once every one to 16 milliseconds. That's our, gonna be our refresh. So, uh, and I'll show you how I set it up. We're gonna have a four millisecond 
refresh so it's going to be in this range and here's the timing right here so what they're saying is you want a, a refresh period from one millisecond to 16 and then a quarter of the time you're going to turn on each anode the way i did it is i have a refresh period of four milliseconds which is within this range but then each anode is going to be on for one millisecond and let me take you over to some diagrams Here's the block diagram for the demo circuit I created for this particular project. So on the basis three, uh, this big black box right here rec rec um, represents our demo circuit. So on the basis three, you have the 100 megahertz clock. We're gonna use a button for a reset. And then here are the seven segment displays right here. So I'm gonna take that 100 megahertz and, and create a 10 hertz generator to drive digits. Now the digits is just gonna consist of four counters um, a ones a tens a hundreds and thousands so every 10 hertz every signal coming from here is going to increment ones and then every time ones gets to nine so it's essentially creating a thousand counter but without just using one like 20 some bit counter to count from zero to ten thousand which is what we could represent right here right nine 9,999 from zero to that is 10,000. But then I would need a binary to BCD converter for each digit coming into seven segment control. So I created a register, four registers, four bits each that will feed off each other and count just like counting from zero to 10,000 or 9,999. And then each of those four bits is driven into here for each digit. And the seven segment control as we saw from the reference manual, we have one seven bit width um, for the cathodes coming here. It's gonna drive seven of the cathodes. This is the decimal point here, the eighth one, we're not gonna connect it. And then each signal, a signal for each anode to switch through and turn on each digit. And let me take you over to the code. Okay, here we are in Vivado. Uh, I created a project for the basis three. We're using Verilog as the target language. Here is the uh, module hierarchy over here. We have a top module and those three modules instantiated like we just saw in the block diagram. So let me go through each one. Here's the 10 Hertz generator, just like a one Hertz generator I did before, but you're, here's the formula you need here. So you're taking the 100 megahertz clock and we wanna divide that by 10 Hertz and then divide that by two so we can get the, the duty cycle. Um, and, and so that is five mega right here. So we have a counter that counts up to that from zero to that is the same as one to that. And then we'll toggle the register. So it's just like the one Hertz generator, we're just doing 10 Hertz and however many Hertz you want depends on this value right here. Now that 10 Hertz is gonna go into this digits. And like I said, I just created four four bit registers to hold ones tens hundreds of thousands and then at every clock 10 hertz um, we just have logic to control each register so the ones you know there's a reset of course and and so it'll reset each register to zero but the basic operation is ones is going to count from zero to nine if it gets to nine it'll reset back to zero and otherwise it's just going to increment now down here for the tens if ones equals nine we're going to check the tens register if that also equals nine then we want tens to go to zero otherwise we're going to increment and then we just create a counter down here for the hundreds and this depends on tens equaling nine and ones equaling nine if hundreds is nine we want to go back to zero otherwise we're going to increment the hundreds and then the thousands counter based is based off of the hundreds tens and ones right here if each of those is equal to nine we're gonna increment the thousands on the next clock edge. Um, of course, if thousands is nine, it's gonna reset to zero, otherwise it's gonna increment. So those four values, those four registers are what's connected into these four inputs of the seven segment display right here. We've got the clock 100 megahertz to drive some other stuff I'll talk about for switching through the anodes. Um, our output of the seven bits for the seven segment for the seven segments of each display. And then here's the anode select here I call digit. So we have four digits, so we have four bits, one for each digit. 
Here's uh, the segment patterns for representing the numbers 0 through 9. Now, right here is how we select each digit. So I have, we have four digits, so I just need a two-bit counter. This can count from 0 to 3, which is four different values for four different digits. And then I have a digit timer here. And um, the reason why I have this many bits is because I want to count up to this number, which is basically 100,000. So here's what I figured out for the refresh rate. So we want one millisecond. So if we take one second and divide it by a thousand, we get one millisecond. And if we times that by four displays, we're going to have a four millisecond refresh period. And so I take the 100 megahertz and in order to get a thousand, it needs to be divided by 100,000 to get that one millisecond per a digit so that's why I'm using this number here so every time this will count up from 0 to a hundred thousand and then reset itself um, and then it will change the digit select value so this every 100,000 uh, ticks of the 100 megahertz so every time this counts it, it's going to increment the digit select so if it starts at 0 it's going to increment it to 1 then after another 100,000, increment it to 2, then to 3, and then it'll wrap around back to 0. And so now we're going to check that digit select, which is being controlled by this timer, and we're going to set our output to the anodes, which I call digit in here. We're going to turn on the corresponding one that we want. So when digit select is 0, 0, the counter, we're going to select this digit. Then when it goes to 1, after... Uh, 100,000 ticks up here we're gonna set this one on after another 100,000 ticks we're gonna set this one after another we're gonna set this one and we're just gonna continue on so that's how that circuitry this all this circuitry works right here to drive each anode to our refresh rate now down here is how we set the cathodes to the value so we're gonna we're gonna use an always block and in a case statement that's gonna pay attention to digit select so if you remember up here, if digit select is 0, 0, we're selecting the ones digit anode. This is the tens, hundreds, thousands, just like it says over here. So if we're at this, in the case that digit select is here, we're in the ones digit. Now we're going to base the value of the cathodes on the value of the ones that is being inputted to the module, which is being driven out from digits, right? Same thing with the tens. So whatever the value of ones is, we're going to set based on the parameters we set up there, the segments equal to those values. And it's the same logic for each one. So you just copy and paste this whole part right here and put it in the case for tens. In the case that we're in the tens digit, in the case we're in the hundreds digit, we want the case of hundreds. And then when we're in the thousands digit, we want the case of thousands. And that's the end of the module. And that's it. And then here's the top module. We're just bringing in that 100 megahertz clock, the reset, and then just like our block diagram, um, we have the output for the segments and then the outputs for the four anodes. Just created some wires here to connect all the instantiated modules. The 10 hertz drives the digits. The digits drives the seven segment control, which drives the seven segment display outputted from the top. Now here's the master, here's the XDC gathered this stuff from the master XDC. And I just want to point out one thing to you because this is specific to the basis three. You'll notice how I have my bit ordering here. I instead I usually do little Indian, which is right here. You have the zero to the far right, and you're counting up to bit three. So three down to zero in VHDL terms. So this is zero up to six in VHDL terms. And the reason why I switch it here, <clears throat> and it's also switched in this module here is just because basically how the basis 3 xdc file comes it comes ordered like this by pin so if i were to change it in the top and then change it in here to go six down to zero which is the little indian ordering um, i would have to come in here and change the ordering of the segment so this would be six five four three two one zero so this is how the master XDC comes. Your segments are going to be backwards unless you change this. Now I could go back 
into my master XCC and change it so that every time I copy it in here it's reordered and then I'll have the little Indian here but I just change the Indian nest if you will to and then and then everything works out fine with the ordering of the segment patterns going on right here so that's why you see this ordered a little differently I just wanted to explain that but here's the uh, constraints for our purposes for this project we're bringing in the 100 megahertz clock the seven seven of the segments not the decimal point i renamed these to digit from and from master xdc and then the button c is the is the reset now let me show you it working on the board i've already programmed it so. uh, hold up one second just before i show you the programming on the board i don't think i explained the segments uh driving the segments as well so i creating this section of video, editing it in um, to explain this better. So how, how do I know what to set the value of these two for the segments? And I, what, what you need is a chart. And um, let me show you the chart and then we'll come back. Okay, here's the chart I created for the seven segment display. So here's the display, and here's how all the segments are labeled. They're labeled from A to G, and they go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So then we need a, this chart here. So the value we want to display goes down this column here, and then across this row underneath the heading segments are all the segments labeled A through G. And remember from the reference manual, it, it's a common anode. We're driving power from the anode. So in order to turn a segment on, we need to, in our circuitry through the segment, the seven bits of the segment um, from our module, we need to turn a segment off, or basically to zero if we want the segment to be displayed, and a one if we want to turn the segment off. So then you just create this little chart right here. You go through to display a number zero, we need all of the segments except for G. So all the segments from A through F are turned on with a zero and off with a one. And you just go through each value and figure each one out. Look at eight down here. All of them are on, right? Because for an eight, we need all of them on. So let's compare these values here from the chart to the values that I put in the code. All right, so here we have the code and the chart side by side. I had to take a screenshot of it, but this is it right here. Uh, so you can see the values that I set for um, for the segments for the value that I want to display is based on this chart right here. You can see all these bit values coincide. So that's how you um, so that's how you drive the segments to the values you want. You can also do letters. Like you can't do all the letters. Like you can't do M or X. You know, you need a 14 segment display to do something like that. Um, but you can do all the hex values. So if you're counting in hex from 0 to F, you can do A, B, C, D, E, and F on these. You just have to extend your chart out for the value you want and then go through and assign the value of 0 for the segments you want on and 1 for the segments you want on. All right, so hopefully that explains how you drive all the segments. Now let me show you it working. All right, here you see the seven segment display on the basis three counting up. I've had it programmed for a while, just letting it run, 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 and count. If I can hit this reset here and we'll start back at zero. So basically, I got those ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands, those four bits from driving the seven segment display. Um, but since we have a 10 hertz driving this, this is like a tenth of a second right here. This is one second, this is tens of seconds, and this is hundreds of seconds. But we're counting from zero to basically to 9,999. So we have 10,000, we can count from 10,000 uh, different um, numbers on here. But there you have it, you see it's working. So the ones ticks the tens, tens ticks hundreds, hundreds ticks thousands. And there you go, That's hopefully that helps explain uh, how to drive the seven segment displays on the basis three. Uh, thanks for watching.